Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. Um, <clears throat> we're coming at you on September 25th, uh, 2020. And, uh, you know, it's a coming up on election year. And this is another uh, special edition where we're trying to go over some of the California propositions voters uh, figure out how they're going to vote. Uh, this is a second part of that. We've already gone over some propositions, but before we get to that, I'm going to introduce you to our panel. So um, immediately uh, underneath me, uh, I have uh, <clears throat> Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty, a retired engineer from the state of California. And uh, at the bottom of the screen, we have Tim Everett, our screaming eagle of freedom, uh, he's a pilot in the state of California. And uh, so now we're going to jump into these propositions. Uh, uh, we went through 14 through 19 on the last show. We're pretty much no across the board. In some cases, heck no. But uh, uh, let's see if we have any better luck on these uh, next six. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, get into Proposition 20. So Proposition 20 essentially puts restrictions on who is allowed to get parole. Uh, so anyways, uh, you know, don't have a lot of strong feelings on this. Do you guys want to jump in on this one? I don't have strong feelings on it, but I'll say yes on 20. Um, I I think there are some things that need to be corrected in, indeed in the, um, in criminal law. And, uh, well, maybe this may or may not be the way to do it, but I I, I think I'll, I'll say yes on, on 20. Uh, yeah, this, uh, okay. Bring me up to speed here. This is the one uh, that's trying to fix the uh, issues with the the last proposition forty seven or whatever. Is that that one, or is this different? Because it's about DNA samples and stuff. Yeah, I, I I think that's correct, Tim. That it's it's trying to fix some previous things in the law. I mean, if you read to the proposition, it does. I don't think it yeah. mentions forty six or forty seven or anything like that. But it, it is trying to, I, I don't know. Um, I say it's, it's trying to stop cuddling the, 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 the criminals, but okay. uh, which, which, some, right. which some of our laws do, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah. OK. Um, if it's, yeah, let's, let's move on to the next one, then. I'm, I'm not real uh, up on this one, one way or the other. Yeah, it pretty much uh, it says it limits access to, to parole programs. Uh, uh, <clears throat> established for nonviolent offenders who have completed their primary offense by eliminating eligibility for certain offenses. Um, so, uh, change the standard requirements uh, the, the governing parole decisions under this program. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's kind of a, a odd one. It also uh, allows for some uh, uh, collection too, as well uh, for uh, criminals. Um, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association doesn't have a position on this one. Um, doesn't sound like there's a, a cost to the state uh, one way or another on this one. Uh, so I'm going to uh, stay kind of neutral on this one myself because I I'm a firm opinion that uh, I'd rather not blindly throw darts at a board myself when I go in there. So I might leave this one blank. Uh, so this is a very tepid no from our panel. <laughs> yes, excuse me, it's yes. Uh, we had a very tepid yes. So that's a that's tepid a, yes. You had a tepid yes for me. <laughs> Maybe as good as we get with California Proposition. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next one then. <laughs> 21. I don't know. I don't think this one is going to be one of those that we say yes to. That is to expand rent control in California. Um, so uh, this one is actually going to allow for more freedoms of, uh, uh, you know, different. Uh, local communities to put more rent controls on on landlords, and you know, from a libertarian perspective, I you know, you you want the price signals to come through. You you know, you don't want price controls that that causes shortages if you try and uh, you know artificially keep the price down by edicts. So, and this is you know uh, you know part of the reason why there's a shortage of housing <laughs> in California. So. Uh, you know, unless you double down on it, seems to be the way government always go. Do you, do you guys have any thoughts on this one? I can't help myself. No, and hell no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where we got the idea that the government is more capable than the marketplace 
than making decisions about pricing. And really and truly, rent control is nothing but a wealth tax. Okay, that's what it does. Because it takes away money from us, essentially, and give it to, to the, the, the tenants of our, of our property. No, I don't want that. It's a wealth tax. No. Hell no. Yeah, and and it uh, it eliminates a mutually beneficial exchange in the free exactly. marketplace. Exactly. Yes. You know, if uh, if I'm willing to pay the rent, then um, <laughs> anyway, this is a definite hell no. I mean, who in their right <laughs> mind, with all we know today about economics and and wage and price controls, it's, it's essentially the same things. I mean, that's what this is. It's a price control. I mean, who? still comes up with these idiotic moronic ideas is well it can only be can only be politicians and exactly so many of these propositions i've noticed came from the democrat side of the ledger maybe that's because california is just dominated by democrats and republicans there are not enough republicans to come up with any ideas good bad or indifferent but this mm. one is so horribly bad You've got to be a complete imbecile to vote for this. Yeah. There you have it. So <laughs> imbeciles vote yes on 21, you dummies. You guys will be happy to know that Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association agrees with us on this one. There <laughs> so, you go. There you go. Surprise, uh, surprise. By the way, I would like to say, too, on this, if anybody uh, wants to look into that a little further, uh, Tim mentioned price controls, and that's a good subject to look up online. Uh, there's a lot of economic uh, sites that will tell you how economists generally don't like price controls, and it's because it leads to a lot of inefficiency in markets. So, um, you know, it's just something to further your own uh, knowledge on that. By the way, an another side issue, too, is that currently we are going through some kind of crazy rent controls as well. I mean, uh, Gavin Newsom in California has yeah. said that tenants cannot be evicted, and uh, Trump on the national stage has said something very similar in this goes to January. So regardless of what we're doing here on these propositions, there's a lot of people in government who apparently have not looked up price controls. And <laughs> no, but, you know, it's not only and it's not only that you have to have some knowledge of economics. Yes, a little bit of knowledge of history. Look at what happened in New York City because of rent control. I mean, yeah. they're trying to do something now, but before the pandemic, they're trying to ease things a little bit. But God. New York was destroyed over this whole price con rent control, and, and they're still trying to do it. Jeez. Okay. okay. Well, moving on yeah. to uh, proposition. Now, last word, Leon. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, moving on to proposition 22. Uh, 22 is uh, essentially that exempts app based delivery and transport companies from being required to provide uh, benefits to its um, uh, employees. And this is something that came about under something that came in the beginning of 2020, which has caused a lot of uh, problems. And that is um, AB5. And so AB5 came in, and it's just this horrific idea by uh, one of our legislatures, one of our esteemed legislatures, Lorena Gonzalez, where she thought in her uh, wisdom that uh, people who are gig workers need to be protected by government and that they apparently aren't don't have the wherewithal to get into their own contracts with somebody uh, for a job and so this has come down on a lot of industries it was mainly meant to focus on uber and lyft and and yet it hit a whole bunch of other uh, industries and there's been all kinds of protests about it from different groups I think truckers you know, uh, uh, made some uh, so, sorts of protests about it and got some kind of exemption on it. And uh, different other, you know, musicians, other people, writers, everybody's being hurt by this thing. And um, and then of all the things, here's a proposition to eliminate the one group this was really targeted at, which was Uber and Lyft drivers, <laughs> which means that people who are Uber and Lyft drivers, I guess, are going to be stuck with the fallout from this nonsense. I, I don't know. But anyway, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, this on this one because this kind of at least gets, you know, uh, it undoes some of the damage. Unfortunately, it'd be best to get rid of AB5, but uh, sadly, that's not on the, the proposition. So this is- Yeah, that's that's uh, my first take on this is why didn't Prop 22 simply say, we vote, vote a yes will repeal AB5. Then it would have been simple. Instead, they've yeah. got all kinds of convoluted stuff added into it. And uh, and it, it just targets, you know, the 
a, a few. Uh, it, it doesn't target as many as AB5 targeted as far as right. people out there. And right. uh, it's got so many stuff on there. It, it's like, you know, government does one thing to screw things up. Uh, AB5. Okay. They do that. And then government comes along with another idea. And, you know, what? what is this going to do? Is How much is it going to help? Instead, it just should have been abolish AB5, just yes. you know, repeal it. And it yes. was simple. And then everybody could have just agreed, oh, yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. Or if you are, again, if you're a complete economic imbecile, then, you know, you would vote against Prop 22, right? Because you're stupid. But yeah. instead, they, they have this stuff. So I'm still going to vote yes on Prop 22, only because uh, you know they, <laughs> it's better than nothing. But it, it could have been so much simpler and better. Go ahead, Leon. Well, I'm I'm like you, Tim. I'm gonna vote yes on, on 22, and it's not it it doesn't go as far as I would have liked it to. But it, as as Jason said, it it undone it undoes some of the damage AB5 does. So I'm gonna say yes on on, on 22. Okay. Yep. And Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association agrees with us on this. This, I think, might be the only one they said yes on. Because because it's a no-brainer. It would have been a bigger no-brainer if it had just gotten rid of AB5, but it's still a no-brainer. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that was a rare uh, unanimous yes uh, on, on one of yeah. these. So moving on to 23 in hopes of more good stuff. Uh, uh, let's see. So uh, Prop 23 um, is essentially add state requirements to kidney dialysis centers. And I, the, the main issue, I think, is it's, uh, it's requiring them to have a doctor on staff. Uh, you know, right. when a lot of these places mainly have nurses on staff. Uh, there's, I, I think there's a few other uh, requirements that goes in here. Um, you guys, either of you guys want to jump in on this one? I say no, no on 23, okay? I don't know why the government think it have to define the relationship between between a, a doctor and a patient or between a nurse and a patient. I don't know why the government has to do that, okay? Because most of these clinics probably cannot afford these clinics that are doing dialysis, that are doing life-saving work, who can't, but they cannot afford to have a doctor full-time on staff. They're probably going to have to close down as a result of this. So I'm going to say no to that. And let the let the marketplace figure this thing out. If the government will just get out of medical care, which is what they need to do, so no to twenty three. Yeah, I agree about that. Uh, the you know the people go in there, they get hooked up. They're already been hooked up by the doctor, so they, they're they're essentially just plugging in tubes into them, and they 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 get yes. on the machine and and it, it hums along for a couple of hours. And then their family member comes by and picks them up and takes them uh, back home. I mean, it's, uh, this is ridiculous. I vote now on 23. Totally, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, the way I feel about it, too, is uh, just in league with you guys is that, uh, you know, this is something that, that, that the market can handle, quite frankly. You know, I, I think, you know, there's a clear signal to people if, if one place is unsafe and another place isn't safe, you know. I, I So... Another uh, issue as well is this is the kind of things that this over prescriptive, I guess, medicine by government is what's driving the cost up of a lot of uh, medical mm -hmm. care. So, and that's one of the uh, complaints of people uh, on the no side of it as well that this will uh, increase costs to people who are looking for uh, dialysis. So, anyways, uh, that's uh, something that uh, I would also vote no on. So, that's uh, all three of us, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, does not appear to have a position on this one. So, uh, but a unanimous no from the group on that one. So, moving on to 24. So, 24, uh, this, this one's kind of a, a murky one. Uh, it essentially ends consumer privacy laws uh, here in California. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, apparently uh, we had some new consumer privacy laws that went into effect in 2018. Uh, and they haven't been there very long, and uh, you know this appears to be something more that they're adding on to the mix. Uh, do you guys have any thoughts on this one? I think the marketplace should be allowed to handle this. I'm going to say no on 24, because the, the thing it's going to do is going to set up some new bureaucracy, as if we don't have enough of it, some new bureaucracy to try to handle these new laws to protect our privacy. 
this thing could be done in the marketplace. So I say no to 24. Yeah, I say no to 24 too. Plus they want to, sh you know, if, if they want to shut, if they're, they're worried about privacy, shut the NSA down and stop this crazy <laughs> stuff. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're so know. worried about privacy. Yeah, so, yeah, they're really uh, worried about you know, um, you know what, what the Burger King or the Twinkie Company or something are going to do with our data, and you know, here. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm so worried about that. Right? Yeah. yeah, collecting yeah. everything. I'm worried but, uh, about that. Yeah, this, this is something uh, where you know, uh, Leon. I think uh, Leon had said that this would create a new, I guess, bureaucracy, and I, I guess that's one of the things it does say. It'll, it will establish yeah. a California Privacy Protection Agency. Exactly. You're protecting your privacy since 2021. Yeah. 2020. <laughs> this one reminds me a little bit of something you know, like I remember hearing Gary Johnson once talk about something he did in uh, uh, New Mexico. And he said, well, you know, we, you know, somebody wanted to pass this law about the, the dog walking, you know, uh, the thing where every dog that was in a kennel had to be walked for yeah. so many hours a day. And oh, said, yeah. Yeah, he said, well, you know, it sounds great, but that means I'm going to have to have the dog walking police. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so at that point, I just had to say no. And I don't know that this one is quite that bad, but it's it's just, you know, yeah. where, uh, you know, they just passed a law. Let's kind of let that play out a little bit and see what happens. And that's also the position of Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association as well as to uh, that they had just passed a, a law in 2018. And, and let's give it a little bit of time to see how that works before adding more laws. Um, also, too, they were a little bit concerned with uh, requirements, how that would affect small businesses as well uh, for sure. compliance. So, <clears throat> okay, well, moving on. Oh, so that's a unanimous uh, a no. That one from the group mm -hmm. as well. And so finally, we get to Prop 25. And Prop 25 ends uh, essentially the uh, monetary bail system here in California. Uh, so it, uh, essentially, we hear about some of these uh, no cash bail laws happening throughout the country where, uh, you know, people come in and um, a lot of them just get released right away, you know, without uh, the whole point of bail is to. Uh, you know, when you come in, uh, and if you're charged with something, usually there's a pretty good reason to have brought you in, and so that then there's they they be able to let you out before your trial. But there has to be some kind of a you know risk assessment. Are you are you likely to come back? Is there something you're forfeiting if you violate the terms of the bail? So right. that's kind of the idea of bail. You let somebody out, and they have a reason to behave trial because otherwise they may lose you know uh, what they had put up for bail so uh do either of you guys have any thoughts on this you know new york city new york now the state of new york has to say you know they they went to this they had reform you know quote unquote reforms and part of it of these reforms involved these no cash bail so they had this revolving door people come in and they go out people come in and they go out and what do you think happened how did that work out crime was is up Okay, so these these things where people don't have to put any anything on the line to get out to get out of a of um, of being in jail while they wait awaiting trial, it's causing all kind of societal problems. It seems that the government is out there to protect the criminals or the potential criminals rather than to protect us private citizens. So I say no to this. Big no. That's better than a hell no. That's better than a hell no. Yes. <laughs> a big no now. <clears throat> yeah. Um, is this our last proposition? This is yes. our last proposition. Last. Yeah. Okay. So, um, wow. Yeah. No bail. Um, boy, the bail bondsmen are going to be like rolling over, wondering how this is going to work out because it'll put them out of business, will it not? Bail, exactly. bail bondsmen? And exactly. they they yes, can make they can make a lot of money. I've uh, known some, and yeah. uh, they uh, they were doing quite well. And so anyway, um, yeah. Uh, okay, so now it's just going to be based on how good you're expected to be. Will will you yes. show up for your trial, yeah. or will you skip town? Uh, is is going to be based on. I guess your reputation, or it's, it's, I, say, think, or? I think it's going to be a risk assessment uh, by a computer computer generated risk assessment is what they're oh. going to use. So oh, what they're going to use now? Yeah. Tell me about it. 
<laughs> the yeah. computers are gonna jet <laughs> i see yeah. i see yeah um the computer has no skin in the game just remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> no kidding okay um just just uh you know i mean i i'm a, a little ambivalent because of lack of information like uh leon had at least the benefit of uh, of a of previous information i but i this just doesn't sound right to me well, you know not back. having skin in the game to get pe people to come back you know so, well keep anyway. in mind also that under the current system a judge in many cases can release somebody on their own recognizance they exactly yeah yes. with bail. True. so i you know yeah. this is something where you could potentially uh you know judges could exercise judgment which is what <laughs> I guess they're there for. I mean, if they're for replacing with computers, I'm not sure if we're still paying the judge to this process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. But, uh, but anyways, yeah, my thought is, uh, you know, kind of a no on that same lines because we do have the uh, capability at this point, if we want to, to let people off without bail. And in the case where we think it's prudent, we can charge bail. So, uh, so there's that. Uh, Howard Davis Taxpayers Association also says, no, so uh, yeah, you know we're all unanimous on this one again. So and just and just one last thought: they this this thing will incentivize people not to appear for their court date. That's what it does. Since you have nothing on the line, nobody have posted bail for you. Your family didn't put up the two thousand, the three thousand, or the five thousand dollars for you. You have nothing on the line. So why would you show up for your court date? That's what you're doing. Yeah. They're incentivizing that. Uh, well, maybe because they get in trouble for skipping their court date but i don't know <laughs> but to give a quick review i think we voted no on everything but uh props uh, it, 22. The, um, uh 22 we said yes on that and we had a soft yes on uh was it 20 i think as well so 20 and 22 are the ones we're kind of saying Maybe a yellow or green light on. Anything <laughs> else we want to do to say vote no? And, uh, and Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association had only one yes, and that was for 22. So just to you know, give you a sense. Uh, but uh, we do have All just right. a little bit more time left before we get to the end of the show. And one of the uh, things that's up in the news right now, and I think maybe you guys have a little bit of thoughts about it, is uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed, and that's uh, mm -hmm. you know creating a lot of you know chaos now in the election as if there wasn't enough chaos already in 2020 in the election do uh, you guys have any quick thoughts about that before we get to the end you, you, you know you know what the, the the mainstream media cnn msnbc and abc and them all of a sudden they just discovered they just in 2020 discovered that politicians are hypocrites okay in, <laughs> in 20 in 2016 barack obama try to put up someone on the Supreme Court when uh, Justice Antonin Scalina died. He tried to put somebody on the court. They were all for it. Everything was nice and wonderful. The Republicans were saying, no, it's too close to the elections. And now in 2020, when Trump is trying to do the same thing, both sides have switched sides. Both sides. <laughs> okay? The Democrats, are saying it's too close to the, the Democrats are saying it's too close to the election. <laughs> and the Republicans are saying it is Trump's constitutional duty to do this. <laughs> so all of a sudden, we just discover politicians are hypocrites. We just discovered that in 2020. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I heard a podcast yesterday, uh, a historian who was uh, an expert on on this uh, matter of, about the judicial process and had uh, a number of books about it. Anyway, I, I, so I haven't checked into this, but he said in the past, there has been um, quite a few times, like uh, 22 or 23 or something, times 20, where this same- 29, 29. 29 times where it was yes. close to an election and you know within a certain certain length of time and uh supreme court justice had had died every time someone was uh nominated by the right. uh, by the president the sitting president every single time I, I can't remember how many times they were actually accepted but you know it, it would depend on the you know the friendliness of the senate but every yeah. time so so uh you know there will be a nomination uh you know the, that's that's a little tough to 
go up against historically, that kind of a precedent. So yeah. there will be something. Well, the sad thing with 2020 is it's bringing in all kinds of chaos that it's everybody yeah. puts them down. And this is just one more thing to add, uh, you know, fuel to the fire. And it's, you know, like the Democrats are now talking about stacking the court afterwards, you know. If, right, if they, right. You know, it's, who knows? I mean, it's all crazy. But speaking of crazy things that are, just, you know, beyond the pale for this election, we're coming into our knucklehead noise control to round out the show. And that's the time when we when we ask something crazy that somebody has said recently. Usually it's a politician because who else? <laughs> but but uh, uh, so uh, as far as this election goes, we've had uh, the people who are running and people who are right up there saying that, you know, well, you know, 2020 is kind of crazy and we may not accept the results. And so. Uh, Trump uh, was recently asked, uh, you know, in a uh, um, <clears throat> whether or not he would accept the results, and he says, uh, "I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster." And when the journalist uh, counted that people are rioting, Mr. Trump uh, in interjected, "Get rid of the ballots, and you'll have a very you'll you'll have a very peaceful there there won't be a transfer. Frankly, there'll be a." Uh, there'll be a continuation. So I don't know if we can even make sense out of all that, but it didn't sound like he said, you know, that hey, let's uh, we'll try and accept the results. And then on the other side of it, uh, Hillary Clinton recently said, Joe Biden should not concede under any circumstances uh, because I think this is going to drag out. And eventually I do believe he will win if we don't give an inch. So it's a tie this time i mean we got two people it's a lot more clear i guess what hillary said than what trump said but either way it sounds like both sides are gearing up maybe to have a lot of reasons not to right. yes <laughs> to have a, a knock it down drag out fight yeah. I, mean, I, I mean listen listen there is a legitimate issue about these mail-in ballots i think trump was trying to say that but obviously you know donald trump he cannot get his words out right okay okay i mean he and joe biden have the same problem but for different reasons. They could never get the words out right. There is a legitimate issue, these million ballots. But, you know, politicians, especially the presidents and, and presidential candidates, should not be making statements like this, okay? Because it really and truly undermines the integrity of our elections. By trying to say that we can not have, a, first of all, yes, we can have a disagreement about the result, but God, man, come on. We could at least say, well, okay, there will be some orderly process by which we will transfer power and let that be the end of the story. But these idiots are out there right now trying to rev up everything to make sure we end up with people on the streets rioting over the results of their elections. Let me squeeze in Tim real quick. Uh, you got something you yeah. want to throw on the fire here? <laughs> no. Well, I'm just wondering which one was the knucklehead, Hillary or Trump? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tie. This is our first tie. Okay. Tie. Knucklehead tie. Yeah, this is our first tie, so I think we're proud of that. Uh, yeah. I, I would agree. I would agree. They are both knuckleheads. For some yes. Reason. Yes. On this well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank That's you for, for joining us for this one. Uh, we've had a great time, and we hope you gained something out of the. Uh, proposition analysis that we gave you, and we hope that helped your analysis going forward. You can catch our show on libertarian counterpoint.com.